uh, Peter will be talking on local and temporal prepositions in Ihonzu. So, Peter, do come on up. The floor is yours. So, my topic was local and temporal prepositions in Ihonzu. First of all, I wanted to look at um, are there even prepositions? How, do, uh, how are the prepositions um, marked? Um, how, they, how are they exp expressed? And if so, how is the subject marked and how is the object marked? So first of all, here are the local prepositions. We have next to, near, above, on top of, under, between, in front of, behind, across from, in, and, and the last one, over, because I wanted to look how, um, how over is, is it, but because I was curious about that. And the temporal prepositions at, before, after, on, and in. First of all, prepositions in Nihanzo are a bit different than, than our, our prepositions, like in German, English, Russian, Spanish, and so on. The subject is always marked, while the object sometimes isn't, which depends on the preposition we use. More on that later. I was thinking why that is the case. And I um, thought about maybe when the um, object is like directly involved, like the, when the subject is touching the object, the object is marked. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that that seems reasonable, but maybe there's some better explanation why it, uh, it is exactly marked. So first of all, we have next to and near. There's no difference between next to and near Nihanzu. And we use the, we, uh, you use the prepositions kumpelo, like in the sentence, umaria okole kumpelo ituntu. Mary is near the sofa. Mary is marked with an u. Ituntu is unmarked, but because ituntu means sofa. Mary is marked, the, uh, the object ituntu sofa is not. Then we have the prepositions above. Um, on top of, there's no difference between up, above and on top of. We use the word migulia, or we add the morphine migul to the noun, like um, here, aniu akoli migulia mituntu. Cats are on top of the so the cats are on top this, of the sofa. Here, the the cats are marked with an A to so, to show that the, that a couple of cats and the um, the sofa is marked with an M to show that, that the cat is on top of the, of the sofa. And the other way to express on top of, we, we can say aneu akoli migul ituntu, to shorten the, the migulia, the cats are on top of the sofa. We have here a marked subject and the object is as well, when the subject, a second example, it isn't the morphine migul already expresses the marking and preposition. So, um, the cat is touching the sofa. That's why we can maybe say that it's, that it is marked. And we have the preposition under. Here you use the word, you can use the word muulungu, uh, muulungu, like in the sentence aniu akoli muulungu bituntu. The cat is, is marked with an A because there are, a couple, uh, there are many cats. Then we have muulungu. And the bed is a ituntu. Uh, bed uh, ituntu, um, is marked in we uh, with, an, with a w. And, and the sentence means the cats are under the bed. And if the subject is hidden by the object, we can use another construction. We, can, we use, um, we use the, the word pihele and ikota. The tree is marked with an p. So aneu akoli pihele picota, aneu is, is marked. Akoli means a, pihele means under. And um, the construction changes because um, the person is under the tree and the pers a person is not seen for here. In both set of cases, though the subject and object are marked. And the next one was between. Here we use the, uh, the word pakate. Like in the sentence, unio ulae pakate amakota. The cat lies between the plants. The cat, the cat is marked with an U. Um, 
got a got a mint plant and this mark marked with an uh, with an armor. So um, we have the marker for the plural because there are a couple of, there are a couple of plants, and then we have arma to show um, that the characters between the plants and both the subject and object are marked here. Next, we have the propos proposition in front of, which uh, which is expressed by using the word pantongela. And like in, here, we have the sentence "ea neu akoli patongela ituntu." So, on that note, um, when I had my data, I, I saw that ca you can say "aneu" or you can say "ea neu." It's it's not it's not a big difference. It's used interchangeably. Here we have the sentence "ea neu akoli patongela ituntu." Cats is marked with an "a" because there are a couple of cats. The the "a" uh, e, but the um, E is, is not necessarily used. And we have the, the word patongela, which means in front of, and the tuntu so far is unmarked. So we have a marked subject, and the object is not marked because um, the cat is in front of the sofa. It's not touching the sofa. And we have the preposition behind. Here we use, we use the word kukitoli. Like in the sentence, a pencil, a coli, kukitoli, umutuga. Umutuga means um, mutuga means car, and it's a borrowing, a borrowing from Swahili. And we, here we have mumutuga, which means in the car. The pencil, uh, I mean, um, means behind the car. The pencil is behind the car. And if the object hides or obscures the object, subject, another construction can be used. Like here, um, a pencil ikingisi igwe umutuga. The pencil is hidden by the car, or the pencil is obscured by the car. So the pencil is not seen because of the car. And both constructions, both subject and object, are marked because um, the, the cat, when it's behind the, the sofa, it's touching the sofa. So uh, the object needs to be marked. And we have the proposition across from. Here we have we use the word pampelo, which means across from or can be translated also with on the side of. We can also use pampelo and kumpelo, kumpelo meaning next to interchangeably, since an object being across from your subject also means that the object is also near the, the subject. So it's, it's really um, no difference what what which one you use. Here we have the sentence Aniu Akoli Pampilo Itunto. Cats are across from, the cats are across from or near the sofa or on the side or side of the sofa. Cats is marked with an A. Itunto sofa is unmarked. So we have the a marked of, of subject. The object is not marked. The cats are not touching the sofa, so it doesn't need to be marked in our case here. Next, we have the preposition in. We have there. I've uh, based on my data, I have not found any preposition for uh, for for that. Rather, um, it's understandable from the context. Like here, aniu akoli mito, the cats are in the house. Cats is marked with an A. Cats is uh, aniu is marked with an A to show that there are multiple cats. Akoli meaning a ah, and mito means ha means house. I especially I especially asked, asked what does house mean, and he said mito. So there, he has no no preposition used. So we have a marked subject and an unmarked object, meaning that the subject is not touching the object when it's in the in the object. Then for the last. Local proposition. I I looked at the word the word over. L like um, here, if you use the word miguya, which means on top of. Or you can also use again the the word the morphing miguya and add it to the noun like um, iloale letoloke miguya mulugulu. Iloa means 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 sun. It is marked with an e. Letoloke means rising, and Miguelia means above. In our case, it also means like we, we we saw earlier that this can also mean on top of. So in our case, we have here 
the sun is rising above or over the hill, and Lugulu means hill, and this, it is marked with an MU. Alternatively, alternatively, you can also use the morpheme Megulia, like here, Eloa, Leto Loke, Megulia, Lugulu, to shorten the Megulia. Now we look at uh, temporal propositions. We have uh, in the Hansun uh, hours and minutes are not used, rather, they, uh, they're said by using Swahili words. The type of day is expressed by looking at the state of the sun. So the day is divided into morning, noon, evening, afternoon, and expressions like quarter past six o'clock or five minutes to five o'clock are not used. So rather than, than using the time, you, you use the state of the sun. You look at the sun and um, say what, what time it is approximately. So the first temporal proposition was at. There is no equivalent in Nihansu, whether the word panga or pa is used. Like here in Bula, ekoa panga la toloka, which means it rains after or at the sunrise. In Bula meaning rain, ekoa meaning rain. Panga means after, like we, like we saw earlier, and Latoloka means sunrise. The thing about sunrise is that um, here it says Latoloka, it only means um, that, the, that something is rising, only for understandable from the context, if, um, you know that the sun is rising. And um, words like it, uh, in expressions like it rains, can only be expressed by um, the rain rains. So there, there needs to be a subject that does the activity, while La, La Toloka doesn't need a subject. It's only under, it's understandable from the context. And in our example here, the subject is marked and our object La Toloka is, is not marked. And the next one, before, before was a bit harder because there are, um, there are three di different um, ways, no, not ways, um, three different, um, can I say that? Mm -hmm. So it the, uh, the proposition before uses the word killer and it differs, it uses a different morpheme depending in which context the proposition is used. Yeah, like here, umaria vendi umba umba azakile kutikola which means Mary goes for a walk before breakfast. Here, Mary is marked with an U, and we use the, the word azakile, which means before, and before breakfast, Mary goes for a walk before breakfast, Kutikola is unmarked. Then we have the sentence, aniu endi umba umba, lezelikile pamungui, which means the cats are going for a walk before afternoon, or during the daytime, pamungui meaning afternoon. Here we use the zelikile, not azakile, because um, because we are um, using the proposition before a type of day, a type of time of day, and in the first case we're using it before activity, and then we have also aniu and the umba umba nelekile kutaka, which means the cats go for a walk before noon or before it becomes hot. Here. Kotaka, noon is unmarked. In our uh, old, two, uh, in the two, uh, two examples, Aniu, Niu is marked with an A, Maria is marked with an U. And yes, the third sentence means the cats go for a walk before noon, before it becomes hot. So my idea was um, as a, as a kile is always used before an activity, the kile is used before a time of day. And daily kile is used before something or something else does an activity. And here the sun. So and not the, the subject is involved, or rather the, the object is involved. And there's also an, uh, there, there's also an, yes, um, next one. After to, to express the preposition before. <laughs> no problem. You use the word pa or panga. Like here in the sentence, aniu and the umba umba panga or pa, pa latoloka. 
you can you can use pa or pa. And, and that means the cats go for a walk after the sunrise. Cats is um, mu is marked with an A to show that the uh, multiple cats Lato, uh, Lato loca is unmarked again. And so we here have here a marked a subject and not an, and an unmarked object. Like uh, we saw in the other temporal um, propositions, no, uh, no, not uh, in, in no temporal proposition, the, sub the object is marked. I talk about it later. Next we have on. There's no proposition to express on like um, in our sentence, Maria, when the umba umba um, when the umba umba luhiku igulio, which means Mary goes for a walk on Sunday. Mary is marked in with a U. Luhiku igulio means Sunday, and it's also unmarked, like, like like the other sentences we saw. And luhiku igulio means first day, but you can also say, say use Jemapeli which is the same word in, in Swahili, or you can also say Luhiku Lamalompi, which means praise day, praise day because our, our speaker was a, is a Christian and they, um, they count the days a bit different, which uh, so the, the, the Sunday is the first day, like it says in the Bible. And um, there are also not differences when the, the, when the speaker is, for example, Muslim, or, or Christian, it's it's a bit different how the days are counted. And the last temple preposition is in. We have no preposition again. Like here, uniu ulala gedaudo. The cat sleeps in the morning. A cat is marked with an u. Gedaudo means morning, and is again unmarked. So we have a marked subject, an unmarked object like the other temporal propositions. And to summarize, most of the local propositions in Hanzo use a uh, proposition. Some, uh, um, like we saw, there's one example of that being in, but all, almost all of the temporal propositions are constructed without a proposition and understandable from the context. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Peter, for this talk. I um, really appreciate uh, the sort of lexical material that you've managed to identify and some of the associated challenges, especially regarding like time and how time is measured, but also how time is expressed in terms of the relationship with the sun in terms of you know the, the the way that days are marked and things, um, I would say that the that sort of the the marking hypothesis is interesting. Um, I think that I think that probably the central challenge for for uh, sort of further developing this uh, hypothesis of objects versus subjects being marked and and the marking having to do with physical contact or maybe other semantic details. I think it's important that when we say marked versus unmarked, we really have a good idea of what those morphemes are sort of in their larger grammatical context. So for example, uh, we know that some of the some of the forms that were highlighted, were class marking affixes. They were marking the, the class of the noun. Uh, and sometimes they were possibly pre-prefixes that were uh, going along. Now that's an interesting question, maybe something to look at. Um, in some of the other examples, uh, we get uh, these uh, these class markers that, that, that are used more to uh, distinguished location rather than noun class. So for example, we had the form, we had the form me too for, uh, for household, yeah? I don't know if we can return to that slide, the me too. No. Yeah, there we go, me too, or me too. Mm -hmm. So um, 
in this case, I know that other people who have elicited the word for house, they were getting key tool, right? For house. So perhaps we need to we need to ask ourselves, is me to uh, morphologically simple? Is it just uh, is it just uh, the uh, is it just me to for for house or at home? Or is it actually morphologically complex? And so I would get the feeling here that me to might be ito, which is house, and then you might get mu, which is a class 18 prefix that indicates being in. So you get, so in this case, it's actually maybe not a lexical preposition, maybe not a noun that's indicating the location, but uh, in Ihanzu and, and several other Bantu languages, you might get a noun class prefix that's indicating the location. So here we might have anyeu akoli mitu, but the mitu is actually mu itu, and the mu is indicating inside. Uh, so that's just one example of marking versus non-marking. But it's very tricky because in languages that we often speak and work with, they are full nouns that indicate location. Uh, and I think that you were also um, encountering a considerable challenge with the language because uh, in a lot of these cases, the, the vowels will disappear when we have a vowel-vowel combination, yeah? So it makes it really hard for us to identify where one morpheme begins and another ends. I know that last year, this was a major challenge. And I think even now, when I work through my own data, it's tr trying to identify a morpheme that might, um, all of its vowels might have disappeared. Um, so I think that, I think that it's, a, it's a really good first step. And the next challenge that I would give you is take a look at some of these forms where we might not see an explicit nominal preposition and to say, hmm, I wonder is, is are one of the noun classes in Ihanzu doing the job there? So this would be something for you to look at, like um, uh, the, the pa or the ki or the mu noun classes of class 16, 17, or 18. But we can have a chat about this afterwards. Um, again, I think it was a really thorough presentation and, uh, and you really sort of uh, brought up a lot of different contexts and a lot of new and interesting uh, lexical prepositions here uh, or whatever we want to call them. Are they, are, they, are they formal prepositions? Are they nouns that are being used as prepositions? It's a really, it's a really cool topic and I really appreciate you dedicating your time to it. I think it's really neat. And um, yeah, I think that there's a lot more that we can do with it. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Anybody in Zoom land? Stanislav has his hand up, so I'll let him uh, ask first. Go ahead, Stan. Yes, thank you. Uh, actually, I was waiting for another piece of information about the existentials that uh, are mentioned here very often. You know, this example, Aneo Akoli Mito. Here, I would expect actually not Akoli, but Amoli. Like, you know, this, uh, this marker of being inside is also inserted into the existential. Mm. Mm. Yes, that might be another way. I would expect this phrase to sound amole kito, like this more. Rather, rather than the cold. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Maybe that, uh, maybe this akole is a generalization of idea being at a certain place, close to a certain place, inside of a certain place, because of the subject. Subject, to me, it sounds strange. Cats and dogs in African context are not that much worse attention. Because, <laughs> yeah, yes, you know how they treat them. Yeah. Like, like beasts from the forest. They, they don't like, they don't pet them. They don't like to talk about them. They're not that much important. And if you keep on going uh, the same path of research, I, I would suggest to exchange this cats and dogs into humans at least. Like the boy is in the house, like the woman is in the house. And then you will have uh, more, more semantically adequate constru constructions. Yes. Yeah, I think that that's a good, I think that that's a good suggestion. Uh, I, I did a lot of I did a lot of my initial uh, elicitation with 
the hyena being a lexical object, being the thing that was hit or the thing that was chased or the thing that was chased away. And one of my colleagues said, you know, if you keep on using hyena, you might not get the, the marking that you're looking for because it's not really an, it's not really like a person kind of thing. You're not going to be getting this sort of like, it's clearly animate, but it's not a sentient sort of object. So maybe you would like to change. I think that that's a good suggestion, Stan. Um, any any thoughts or ideas, Peter? Do, do you have any anything that you'd like to respond to there, or just uh, or shall we ask for other questions? No. No. Okay. Do you have any other? Yes. I'm interested in this. So so the prepositions that you have. Um, so uh, I was looking at the locative ones, they seem to be morphologically complex. And I was wondering whether you have thought looking into that. And, and that's what I grasp now from what you are saying, Andrew, that they have like a nominal root or something and some additional prefixes. Is that, is that the case? I think, I think that Peter was actually on to, you had a slide when you were talking about breakfast versus something else. It was, I think it was something going for a walk before breakfast mm -hmm. and then something going on a walk before sunrise. And I think that this was a significant difference, uh, Peter. I think you're really onto something here. So we know that we know that, for example, kuti kola mm -hmm. is like probably has something to do with probably has something. It's probably something verbal, right? I'm not 100 percent sure if that's the case. Mm -hmm. Whereas pa mungui is probably is probably very uncontroversially a uh, a noun, but the noun itself is probably pa. With the, with the class, I think it's class 16 noun mm -hmm. prefix, meaning sort of like at, and then mu being another class prefix, and then the ngui meaning, you know, meaning something to do with the afternoon there. Um, so yeah, this idea that some of these things are probably lexi, lexi, like morphologically complex, it's like, what do you do with that? Um, and uh, yeah, I think, I think that there is a, dis a distinction, Peter, you sort of noted that adza kile is different from le zeli kile, and maybe it has to do something with... Yes, so there's a, um, a fourth one I didn't. Ah. Um, there's an, also, an, um, I had the example, um, the, uh, the, the cats are going for a walk before being taught, and there was the proposition asuke, not... Asuke, uh, so that was something a little bit different no, as well. No, no kile in there. So I was thinking, what what should I do with it? <laughs> <laughs> your question, your uh, your guess is as good as mine. There, um, and my idea was maybe, okay, maybe when the an infinitive is used, you use azuke, and not any of the other azakile, litelikile, or nelikile. So it's a different type of construction that you step. So clearly, clearly a lot more uh, stuff to pick apart. Um, and uh, like I said to Verena, you'll uh, you'll have to come back for a, uh, or you'll have to come to uh, Ifaga for a uh, for a visit sometime and uh, and clear up some of these uh, outstanding uh, questions. Uh, but again, I think that you uh, took on a really complex topic, and I think uh, and I think that these first steps in sort of like sorting out what's going on here. Um, are really good. So uh, I think, yeah, I think great job.